Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję za zaproszenie i możliwość. Thank you very much for this invitation, the ability to tell you about it. I have to say that hydrologists are not often shown against such a fiery background. It's not our daily bread. But this probably emphasizes the challenge uh, of telling you in 20 minutes about the water situation. And this is what we're going to do with my colleague uh, right now. Talking about uh, farm to fork, there is just one reflection. The strategy was developed in order to respond to the question, how do I know if the food's good? I can either take it from special areas, the middle of a, a national reserve, very carefully produced and pay for that, or we can say, let's produce everywhere in Europe in such conditions that we're certain that the food is good. And I think that's the simplest description of what we want to achieve. Whether it's achievable, I don't know, but I hope it is. When we look about what we are trying to present, uh, we're going to talk about the water resources. That's the introduction. Do we have water or do we not? Or what are the prospects for the future? We're going to talk about two main pressures, social economic, which is uh, described by EU strategies and their uh, responses in Poland, and the climate pressure, the climate change that we observe and we will probably continue to observe, to be observed. And we have had, we've done some modeling studies for the purposes of this report. Mikoa is going to present that. And what can we do uh, in the uh, um, achievable perspective that is probably going to be important? When we look at water, the key thing is not only to look at the surface of the water and not the quantity, but also the quality of water. And I'll demonstrate why it's important. We have between 40 and 80 uh, billion uh, cubic kilometers of water that goes to the sea mm, with the main rivers, the Vistula and the Oder. The key thing is the rainfall, because we have 200 uh, cubic kilometers of rainfall, and 16 cubic kilometers we can intake from underground in a safe way, which means that they can replenish. Is it a lot or is it not enough? I'll tell you in a moment. But let's also look at the map on the right-hand side. It tells us what's the environmental condition of the waters, which this was done uh, by the water based on the water dive. The good situation in Poland is on less than 1%. This is not really chemical conditions, but hydromorphology. It's how the rivers flow. Not only in Poland, but anywhere else in Europe, the quality conditions is something we're not so far being able to deal with. And this is something that's good to keep at the back of our minds. Now, let's look at our position. The table shows the amount of water per capita. You probably know that from the press. Uh, Poland is worse than Egypt. Not even going into the details of that ratio, let's look at the highest one. Every one of us had probably been to Croatia at some time. Please think about it. Croatia is the country which has the largest amount of water in Europe. The difference between the countryside that you see and the amount of water that's available and how we calculate the ratio is not obvious. The second table in the middle that puts us in the middle is the percentage of usage or utilization of the available water. We have under 10%, which still makes us safe. In terms of the quality of water, we are average. Once again, if we take the measurement of a, uh, reaching a good environmental condition of the waters, for the most, we have not done it, but we're not the last in Europe. So that's the situation in Europe. The very stringent environmental requirements put forward as a goal by the EU to the member states, which, by the way, was supposed to have been achieved by 2015, has not been achieved, and it's, it's a long way to go goal. Hydrologically, in terms of dispersed pollution, mainly nitrogen and phosphorus, and some uh, so-called priority substances, a long way to go, as I say, for both Poland and Europe as a whole. A lot to be done. As I said, the measurement of do we have a lot of water or not is based on how much water we need. We are using, we are 
taking in about seven uh, cubic kilometers of uh, water per year, of which a vast majority, 70 percent, is for cooling. It's industrial, but it's for cooling turbines. So we take in, heat up, cool slightly, and dump it. That's a very important thing. The intake is not usage. 90 plus percent of the water we take in the cities, that's about one kilometer, cubic kilometer, comes back. It comes back either in a situation like this, that what you dump in Warsaw can be used in Płock. So the the usage of water is temporary, or we transfer it to the negative in terms of quality so badly that we have to look for other sources. So once again, intake does not mean usage. The only sector that changes or affects the hydrologic uh, cycle is watered agriculture, where they take in water, the water transpires, evaporates, and then falls down as, as precipitation somewhere else, somewhere else into the hydrologic system. The intake for both watering in agriculture and for food industry is very small, less than 2% of all consumption. I will say that globally 70% of water consumption worldwide goes to irrigate, irrigated agriculture. Of course, irrigation officially, because this is uh, Polish statistical data from the Polish Statistics Office, we're looking at anything over 20 hectares that's irrigated. And we know that there are very few such areas. Usually, irrigated areas are very small, horticulture mainly, and they don't use uh, surface area. They mainly use unregistered water wells, such that are uh, re recorded as self-usage. So we don't know how much of this water we're using, even though we declare that we do. These are estimates based on the area of possibly irrigated area. This is the gray zone. It, the people know that there is such a thing. And it is also very important for it to be controlled in terms of we need to know how much water is used. But it's so. So here, what we the data we're giving are probably underestimated than overestimated. And the way it's going to change is key in our statement of the position in terms of the usage of water in Poland. When we talk about development, uh, as we said, we we use the acts of law or strategies for activity in the EU and uh, in in Poland. I think that there are two important factors in this environmental agricultural strategy of the EU. Sustainable development understood as reinforcing settlements, which means that the external costs of production, including food production, agricultural production, that we do not count, such as soil degradation and the reduction of resource, including water, will come back and that we start producing in a good environment. They are, these are combined with a very strong climate-based uh, change of conditions so that we maintain climate neutrality also in agriculture. These are actually written down uh, on paper. In two years' time, we will also have the restitution directive, which will uh, allocate 15 percent uh, of EU area, total area, for biodiversity. What's happening in Poland in response to EU initiatives is consistent, or, although perhaps not as publicized uh, uh, as elsewhere in the EU. It seems that there is more resistance to reduce the effectiveness or productivity at in order to improve the quality of uh, the production areas and the quality of the ecosystem. What we clearly see in terms of water management is first and foremost uh, that after two years of uh, discussions, the frame water framework directive is maintained as the main tool. Uh, uh, this is a way to demonstrate that the EU is able to, to maintain the desired ratios. Also, in the way that rivers and uh, um, wetlands are maintained. Also, uh, peat areas are, are emphasized because they reduce carbon emission. 
So even though we have 8% in the area, we emit, we produce several, over a dozen percent of emission. When we talk about postulates that are expressed by the EU, what is written in the Polish strategies in some area is already written down, especially in terms of, of increasing resilience and including land improvement areas uh, for water versus an oration where we build huge re uh, reservoirs and we use those uh, to, to irrigate using pipe, pipe water pipelines, which would be difficult to do. So we have two descriptions, one more environmental, the other more production-oriented of what's going to happen in agriculture in the future. This uh, coincides with the climate um, situation, where we can describe it. either it's warmer and more water, two, more dynamic, and three, we can't really describe what's going to happen on Friday afternoon in 2040. We can only talk about characteristics that are going to affect uh, the way we imagine the future, and the models confirm that there will be more events such as droughts uh, or torrential rain that will be, uh, or torrential rains with drought in between. A lighter winter time, fewer days with snow cover, with all the consequences of this, such as lower post uh, winter retention. It has to be replaced with soil retention because landscape uh, water retention uh, that is quite limited in Poland. We can expect lower crop yields because there are going to be increasing, increasingly frequent periods of drought. When we try to describe this with a model, I'd ask, like to ask Mikołaj to tell you about it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In this part of the presentation, I'd like to try to interest you in the results of our simulations. We run some research where we use the hydrologic model in order to answer some questions. The first question that we asked was what could be the demand for irrigation water in Poland, in agriculture, with certain assumptions about what sort of crop would be um, irrigated. We assume that there will be um, some, some arable land and some greenery. Then we asked to how could we use uh, landscape water for irrigation. So look at this before we look at underground water. And thirdly, we looked at land improvement uh, areas. How far uh, can they help in, in uh, storing more water in the soil? These are some of the results of our uh, numeric experiment. They illustrate uh, the multi-year variability of some characteristics. And I'll start with precipitation. This is the dark blue line on top. One figure was already mentioned, but basically the, the precipitation is variable between 500 and 800 millimeters per year. And the variability of rainfall or precipitation uh, translates into variable demand on irrigation water. And these are the fields in pale green and light blue. In the years where there, were reduced, where there was reduced rainfall, especially 2015, then the total demand exceeds uh, 3 billion cubic meters. It is a significant number. It's two uh, ranges uh, higher than the, than the historic demand as reported by the chief statistics office in Poland. During humid years and average years, that number ranges between half and one billion cubic meters, so it's significantly lower. The data presented in this graph is average for Poland, but we know the climate is quite diverse throughout Poland. Uh, soils are different in different regions. The structure of, ag uh, uh, of uh, agricultural crops are different, so we could present the results as maps as well. 
starting from the left, these are irrigation needs and the results show where they're the highest. In the triangle between northern greater Poland, Mazowsze, central Mazowsze and Kujawy. This is where, especially in the years that are dramatically dry, this is where we have the highest needs for irrigation. Map number two shows how much we could cover those uh, needs during the dry years by landscape retention in small ponds, small reservoirs. The pale green areas means that the coverage is 10 to 20 percent, which is very low. And then it shows you that, unfortunately, those areas where the demand is the highest, uh, we can't meet it using this source of water. The third, the third experiment and the third map related to the limitation of outflow from land improvement systems indicates considerable opportunities for making the soils more humid in those areas where the drainage uh, systems have been neglected over time and they would need um, some outlays to improve. The results that I've presented relate to historic climate and we're all asking ourselves the questions, yes, but what will happen in the future given climate change? How will that translate into the future water balance? Maybe that's not common knowledge because we keep talking about increasing drafts and drafts being more acute, but the totality of rainfall based on climate models shows that in Poland there's actually a tendency for increased precipitation. I just wanted to say that, first of all, this is uh, data acquired with high uncertainty and also the uh, number talking about three to four billion cubic meters of irrigation uh, compared to uh, transpiration is relatively low, especially compared to the 16 billion cubic kilometers of underground waters. I'd like to end there and uh, give you the floor. When we talk about challenges and activities, the key here is to strengthen the water sector so that uh, the possibilities for retention and changing the agricultural landscape is better, improving the environment so that these habitats are the source of good quality food. We can expect rapid changes in irrigated land if droughts are more often or if the price of food is so high that it's worth investing in agricultural areas in terms of irrigation. Uh, so I will need to look at further slides and conclusions. So irrigation systems, uh, these refer to agriculture from 16 to 18 billion zloty to uh, improve the irrigation system on a particular areas waste treatment despite the investments in various treatment plants this is still a challenge land improvement systems not only as an element for production but to prevent drafts and to provide more retention so more dispersed systems not only in retention storages and investments in irrigation system as a protection of the climate. So we can see in the second column the needs, finan financial needs from agricultural sector, from investors, from national plans. So it would be a challenge to combine it with numbers other than just these 18 billion for the irrigation system. Going to the conclusion right now, we cannot see water as a barrier, as a limitation in terms of uh, food production in agricultural sector. And this is a positive message, but please remember, 
these more frequent drafts are going to affect our environment. So go back to this first layer. So talking about the experiments in water sector. So we will have areas in Poland that are going to be very dry. So uh, various habitats, peatland, um, wetland, this is going to look a bit different because the environment is going to transform. So it will be uh, a little bit different, especially in the central part of Poland. So this gray zone is important. We need to recognize it and civilize it because uh, this is using the groundwater resources. So we will have significant interventions here, especially in agricultural sector. In this agricultural landscape, these non-production functions regarding environmental protection, the European Green Deal, um, this is what we refer to, but also ex extreme events. Uh, this can also be a source of income for the farmers. It seems um, when we look at, when we read various regulations, strategies, we can see that this impulse for changes is stronger in Europe than in Poland. As for the extraction of water, it will not exceed four cubic kilometers. This is much better than what we have right now, but we are still on a safe side when we talk about this uh, 12 kilo, uh, cubic uh, kilometers. That will be the base for the improvement in uh, the water resources. Precipitation. Uh, um, and irrig this is also a source of water. This can be conditioned for the environmental sector, so the drought season between May and June. This is key also in agricultural sector, and then how much uh, must be added. The need to improve land uh, improvement facilities uh, and um, undervalued factor related to the need to improve the hummus layer because we are using the capital from our nature, three, four percent of hummus layer. Now it's 2.53. So we have consumed uh, that without paying for it. So this can be recovered. More challenges in the, con in the context of the quality of our environment than in the context of building hydrological, hydrotechnical facilities. They are going to shape this landscape within the agricultural sector with droughts uh, occurring more and more frequently. Thank you very much.